All righty, we're back for another exciting edition of Cloverleaf Radio. I am your host with the most, Jimmy Falcon. Uh, my co-host, Grimlina, had some surgery today or some, some quick surgery today or something like that. She had to go under anesthesia, so she's not going to be with us today. But uh, we are with uh, actor Dean Wynn. How are you, Dean? Hello, hello. So good to talk to you. Oh, same with you. How is everything today? It's doing. I'm doing great. Doing wonderful. Well, I was curious, of course, uh, being in radio, I was curious why you decided to uh, get into radio yourself. Um, actually, that's a funny story. I have always wanted to get into radio. I remember when I was a kid, I would. Uh, my dad would always turn down the radio in the car whenever we went on trips, and I'd always put my ear to the uh, speaker because I could never hear, you know? Um, and I would never listen to the music, I'd always listen to the DJs in between the songs. So... And I grew up outside Chicago, so I used to listen to a WLS, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with that oh, station. Yeah. but absolutely. Yeah. So I listened to Larry Lou Jack and Tommy Edwards and John Records Decker. So I always wanted to get in the radio. So that was like, when I was a kid, it was like one thing I really wanted to do was, was to be on the radio and direct, but everybody wants to do that, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess, uh, especially if your life is really interesting, you want to make a depiction or a biograph of your own life. Right. I, I guess that would be a dream of some. But uh, moving on, I know you uh, you left uh, your radio time to focus on voicing Barney. And how did the whole thing come about with you getting to voice Barney? And uh, if we could hear you say anything as Barney, that would be really interesting. Sure. Um, oh, I love you so much. <laughs> oh, uh, Barney, was that weird? Uh, Barney, <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> Barney was an audition that I, I was working at Radio Disney at the time and I was doing mornings for Radio Disney and there was, uh, auditions for Barney and Bob West, the original, uh, voice was leaving. So they were looking for someone to come in and then do that. So I, I could never actually audition in person because I was always on the air or at that time we were doing a bunch of movie premieres. So I was constantly out in LA. Um, so I sent my audition in. So I just sent like a CD in every day. I just recorded something and put it on CD and, and gave it to him. And then um, I just got a call back. And then after that, it, was, it took like a year after that before they finally moved me into that position. They had hire, already hired someone else to do the voice, but he only did, um, I think, one one video. He never did any series. And they weren't too happy with him, so they uh, they got me. And, uh, you know, that what I really enjoy about that is that you weren't just like the fly-by-night Barney that did like the the one video like you were just speaking of. It was such a long career. Uh, what were, you know, some of your memory, fond memories of those many years of, of voicing Barney? I have so many. Um, the very first thing I ever did is Barney. I had to go up to New York. It was right after uh, 9-11. And it was like in November, which, you know, is pretty close, two months. But I had to go up there and sing We Are Our Family with a whole bunch of other, like, uh, characters. So I, I, I was able to um, – I actually sang with Elmo. Um, so I'm at Kevin Clash. I uh, sang with Big Bird. I sang with uh, the uh, – what is it? Between the Lions? Wait. Yeah, Between the Lions. A um, bunch of just PBS shows. So that was a pretty amazing thing for my very first thing to do. Wow, that that's just like uh, I mean I could imagine seeing like Big Bird and Barney the mm-hmm. Dinosaur together with this. Oh my gosh! Even at my age now, that would be like nostalgia as a kid. Just wow. I'm sure you can find the video. It was uh, Niles Rogers did the initial original song "We're Family" that was uh, recorded by the Pointer Sisters, and he got uh, all the characters to do a version of it. So it was pretty cool. Actually, it was a very very interesting experience. I'll have to look for the video. I know I just did a quick Google search, and I see a picture of one of our alumni, my old pal Roscoe Orman, a.k.a. Gordon from Sesame Street, with a picture of no. uh, Barney and Big Bird. So There you go. Yeah, it was fun when they all got together. And that was Carol Spinney, too, so pretty amazing. Wow, nothing better than the original. Yeah, he's the original. He's amazing. And I was—I um, I did another event uh, not too long ago. We, we shot something for Sprout, uh, the Sprout Network, and we were doing uh, commercials with Big Bird again. And Carol Spinney came up to me, and he 
actually knew what I like to eat. Like you said, I know that you like this as a snack, which is weird that he actually knew anything about me because, you know, I grew up watching him. Yeah, it's a this, small uh, world. Yeah, it, it really is. This picture, uh, actually, it says it's from the PBS Kids Sprout launch party. Yeah, there you go. Yep. So it's been pretty I, – I have, I have so many stories, so many different Barney stories. All great. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, did you, I mean, when you, did you ever have a dream to, to act at all? I did. When I was in high school, I was uh, big in the theater. And um, I remember when I was in college, I went to University of Illinois. Are you in, um, are you in Illinois? I am. That's, uh, I shot you that message. Yeah, I'm actually about 40 minutes south of Champaign. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I went to school there. But um, I remember I was on the quad, and I was trying to decide if I was going to audition for a play or if I was going to go try out for the radio station. And it was this – my whole high school, all I did was act. And, you know, I, I had, like, uh, fake radio stations I built when I was a kid, and I used to make tapes for my friends and everything. So it was a real big choice there if I was going to go into radio or go into uh, theater. And I, I walked down to the radio station. So there you go. But now I get both best of both worlds, I guess. Kind of funny you mentioned that because, like, I remember when I was a kid, I would always have, like, the little uh, tape recorder and I'd, you know, have my own characters and stuff. And that's probably what prompted me to do radio now. But it's kind of funny how if you work hard enough, you can attain your dreams. Absolutely. And uh, Radio Disney was a dream come true because at the time, there was nothing like that out there. And um, we pretty much, uh, I was, there's three of us that started it. And I was pretty much, I was the first one on the air, but um, I was able to pretty much do whatever I wanted to. So everything I had grown up listening to, you know, morning show wise, I was able to actually do my own spin on, which is unheard of now because, you know. Wow. And you bring that up, Radio Disney, that's, that's became a very gigantic, uh, you know, part of Disney itself. Right. Yeah, we only had five radio stations when we started. There were test markets. And uh, I was on the first one on the air, and we didn't think that the phone calls, we didn't think anybody would even know about us because we were, um, you know, nobody even knew we were out there yet. And the phone would, like, not stop ringing the first morning. And I was trying to figure out, you know, we were, tr- we were trying to figure out the whole format, like what songs we were going to play, what bits we were going to do. And uh, it's pretty uh, pretty amazing. But yeah, I had no idea that, that you were the first guy on air there. That's ama- that is amazing. Wow. Yeah, I love that station. Very fun memories. Well, Dino, what's I mean, what's coming up in the future for you? I know I'm sure that you have a lot of stuff going on. Um, yeah, Barney is like on hiatus. It's been on hiatus for quite a long time now. Um, they've been uh, the people who bought Barney, and they also have Thomas the Tank Engine. So they've been trying to um, focus all their attention on that right now. And I think Barney will be coming back. I'm not sure exactly when, but it's too big of a uh, of a property to just not do anything with, you know? Because I think everyone yeah, that, in the world knows who Barney is, you know? That's what I'm saying. You know, you think about Sesame Street, Barney the Dinosaur, Mr. Rogers' mm-hmm. Neighborhood. These They didn't just, uh, you know, enlighten and bright and young, ch- young children from just like one small generation. I mean, it was a long list of kids, you know, that are older than me now that it grew up on Barney. And, you know, I, we do a lot of meet and greets uh, where we'll go out and see, you know, we'll go to hospitals and we'll do uh, make a wish or we'll have uh, those kids come into the studio and you'll be surprised how many older kids still love Barney, you know. And want their pictures taken with them. And they know it's not really cool, but it's just, it's really nice kind of a, but how can you hate Barney? I mean, all he does is love, right? Yeah. I mean, I think the, you know, it is, it is for the younger generation, but it it is something that can, you know, you can put it toward all because it is so great and teachings and everything like that. It's it's really worth, uh, I don't know what it is. I'm kind of like a, a bad day today putting stuff together. <laughs> I what else? Lost, just lost. I just lost track of thought. I mean, I was. But um. Well, yeah, I think Barney. Barney just brings a lot. Um, 
to kids that I don't think they even have right now because there's not there's I don't think there's any show out there that did what Barney did, you know, in terms of any show that lets you uh, has a child hugging their parent at the end of it, you know. You don't see very many shows that can can do that. Not to oh, out my own horn or two by own horn, you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, it could Barney, be what she could be like. Barney, that, Barney uh, is a bunch of people, and Barney always has been. Barney's just a, a labor of love from from everyone. I was going to say, it could be worse. She could be, you know, working at the local Chuck E. Cheese and dressed up as the mouse. I mean, you could have a worse That's character correct. portrait. That's true. You know, it's funny, because the people sometimes they ask me um, what I do, you know, or uh, what I've done, and I'll mention that, and they'll always think I'm lying. And I always think, why would I say that if I'm going to lie about something, you know? <laughs> why would I just pick that one? Uh, you could say you're like the next James Bond, you know, you're a double right, A exactly. half or yeah. something. But exactly, but no, you know. I'm Barney. Yep. Uh, but I don't. Yeah, I always. Uh, perhaps. I always had a like a little voice, I guess. That I, I like to do little voices, like I was mentioning when I did the the cassettes as a kid growing up. I always had my voices, but I had like a voice that I guess probably was based on Barney's. Oh boy, looky here! Come here, children! Right. Oh, oh. <laughs> you know, something right. like that. Yep. And that's uh, that's always kind of like my my close to Barney. Fresh. Like a bullwinkle, almost. Well, bullwinkles like this. Ooh, a bull right. feather in the head. <laughs> yeah, that's what the that's what Barney used to sound like to me before I got the job. I, I always think Bob was going for the bullwinkle. I think actually he did say at one point that's what he was basing it on. So. Little secret there for everybody. Yeah, I guess you know when you really think about it, you could see the voice comparisons there. Yeah. Well, Dean, but Barney uh, started. I, I mean, when Barney first oh, started sure. out, it was very different too. I mean, Barney was a blue dog when they first started shooting it. I mean, he really evolved uh, physically. Wow, I had no idea. He looked like okay. a blue dog. He wasn't a blue dog, but he the way the way they the costume was, it looked like a blue dog. So. Wow, you learn something new every day. There you go. <laughs> well, great talking to you. Yeah, would you uh, like to plug your website before uh, you go, Dean? Um, sure. I do a bunch of VO right now. I just got done with what are some big clients I've done. I did um, Omaha Steaks. I did um, Vonage and AT&T. But you can check me out at Dean, or I'm sorry, www.vothatsreal.com. So, there you go. All right, Dean. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to join us today. It was great talking with you. You too. Have yourself a great day. Oh, you as well. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All righty. Well, Grimlina, of course, I, I, I said she had surgery. I don't think it was actually surgery. She didn't... Uh, tell me completely yesterday, but uh, she said she had to go under some anesthesia and she was going to try to join us, but I guess she probably fell asleep. I really don't blame her. But uh, we regardless had a wonderful uh, episode today with Dean Wynn. And uh, I wish I had got to my point. I guess the point I was trying to get to, you know, was like, you think about Barney the Dinosaur and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and Sesame Street these children's shows that have been on for decades, you know, they have really enlightened generations far more than just one, you know, kids, you know, still these days are watching Barney the Dinosaur, and it's just amazing to think that, like I said, kids older than me, you know, have the memories and and learn stuff from the teachings of Barney the Dinosaur, you know, it's still, still is growing and going today, so, 